it feels like a relaunch, you know, and now being a judge on the show, um, it's, I'm in a different position, but, uh, but the, what I feel with this particular season so far is there's a lot more warmth and heart that I, that for me being a part of the show for so long, I remember. First and foremost, congratulations on your partnership with Southwest Rapid Rewards. Tell us about how this um, partnership came about. Yeah, well, like, like you mentioned, uh, you know, I'm teaming up with uh, Southwest Rapid Rewards credit cards uh, from Chase to launch this uh, Teach the Love contest, which is a contest about giving back to teachers and educators, which I'm very passionate about, right? I mean, mentors and teachers in my life have really impacted my life tremendously and now more than ever, you know, especially with the pandemic and all these different things that have happened, they've been absolute superheroes. So Southwest are are um, creating this amazing con- uh, this contest, you know, called Teach the Love Contest, and uh, going to basically be um, rewarding these teachers with these amazing trips. Um, and they're calling it an Edu Vacation, which is which is perfect because it's an education and a vacation wrapped in one. Um, and uh, it's it's a great it's a contest, and it's it's. It launches October 5th, which is, is also World Teacher Day. And, you know, kids or, or the parents can nominate those teachers in their lives that have really gone above and beyond, you know, changing these kids' lives and, 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 and just being amazing teachers. So uh, it's, it's amazing. It's a, great, it's a great contest that's giving back because, you know, I always say that the secret to living is giving. So whenever we're giving, whenever we're serving, um, we're always at our best. And... Uh, I think that this is a, a perfect concept to give back to the teachers. And, and um, if, if for those who want to enter, uh, nominate a teacher, it's, uh, you go to chase.com slash teach the love and uh, nominate your favorite teacher or your favorite educator. And, uh, and that's, yeah, I'm excited. I kind, of, I kind of all laid it all out there, but that's, that's um, it's kind of, per- I love traveling so much. It's a huge part of my life. It's something that inspires me constantly in everything that I do. And I'm a forever student, and I'm so thankful for all the teachers in my life that have impacted me. So this is a perfect marriage of uh, travel and education and, um, and giving back. So. so how does the contest work? You said that a student or a parent of the student can nominate the teacher. And then from there, what happens? Do, does the teacher then go on a vacation of their dreams or is it an educational trip? How does it work? Yeah. So like you mentioned, um, a teacher, sorry, a parent or, you know, uh, a student can nominate their teacher and, um, and yes. And so if they win the grand prize, uh, they get to go on an amazing trip, uh, which is a fantastic place, but also there's an educational element as well to it, you know, for just, let's just say like Washington DC, for instance, which is a, a fantastic place to go to learn, but also to enjoy yourself. Um, actually, my favorite restaurant in the entire world is in Washington D.C. Of all places, I, I can't. Too. It's the Hamilton. <laughs> it's my favorite place. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, there. Well, there you go. I mean, perfect. It's, and um, so it's it's a mixture of both, right? Between just pure education, um, you know, pure vacation and education. Hence the name, Edu Vacation. <laughs> um, because part of that too is to inspire the teacher as well. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, me being a coach and a teacher myself. When I travel, I get inspired, I get moved and and I bring that back with me and I, and I implement that into, you know, creative ideas or things that I can do to, to create. And so that's sort of the, that's sort of what this is about as well is also inspire the teachers um, and to, you know, let them come back and then to continue being an amazing educator and an amazing teacher. And, and uh, yeah, so there's a, there's also purpose to it as well. So to what extent are you involved in the contest? Are you just an ambassador of this entire thing or how involved are you? Yeah, I, pre, pretty much an ambassador. I mean, I want to get the word out because I want as many people to nominate these teachers as possible. Um, you know, again, I just reflect back on teachers in my life who have impacted me tremendously. And I mean, I I might even have to nominate one of my teachers, you know, <laughs> back in the day. I mean, no, but truly it, it's... Uh, I think back at those teachers and if there was something like this, even back then when I was younger, I would love to have them have this experience to go travel and, and to get inspired and motivated and, uh, and just to feel seen, you know, to feel seen for all the hard work they've done. And, um, and that's what it's all about. 
Now, you mentioned earlier briefly about how teachers really became the superhero of the pandemic. And there is a lot of dialogue going on right now about, um, you know, teacher shortages nationally, inadequate pay for teachers. How do you feel as if this con this contest helps fill that void or, you know, at least does something to show our love for our educators? And what do you feel as if needs to be done to keep teachers in the field? You know, I think like what you said before was, you know, teachers are, are like you said, are absolute superheroes. And we are so thank we're so lucky to have educators and, and especially educators who go above and beyond, you know, who, and again, I just go speak from experience, the teachers that have changed my life. And it wasn't from like the curriculum books. It wasn't from the textbooks. It was just from their hearts. It was from their souls, you know, and it's kind of, you know, funny that the Southwest is the heart of the skies and these teachers have such great hearts. Um, you know, so for me, I think it's just giving opportunities to these teachers, you know, giving opportunities for them to to do what they do best, which is to educate and to give and to serve and and um, to let them be seen and to let them feel appreciated. I think that it's uh, just even small acts like that, just feeling that feeling that appreciation and something like this, I think can go a long way. And, um, you know, I, that's why I think it's just fantastic, you know, with the with this, with this contest and uh, hopefully g giving back to the teachers that deserve it. Of course. So I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about, you know, some other things that you've had going on before and after this. So there sure. are some major changes over at, you know, you're an alum of Dancing with the Stars and, you know, you won the mirror ball six times during your tenure. And there have been some big changes since you've exited. There are two new hosts who are now on the show and it's also now streaming on Disney plus what is, mm -hmm. what's your take on what's going on with the franchise? I am, I'm very excited about it actually. Um, it feels like a relaunch, you know, and now being a judge on the show um, it's, I'm in a different position, but, uh, but the, what I feel with this particular season so far is there's a lot more warmth and heart that I, that for me being a part of the show for so long, I remember you know, in the, in the earlier, in the earlier days, really, that, that there's like this nostalgia I feel with this season. Mm -hmm. And what I actually love about Disney Plus is one thing is that there's no commercials. So we <laughs> just, we just, just go. go, it just goes, it's just nonstop action. And it's wonderful. And it gives us more time to tell stories and actually to get to know the celebrities and to have a little bit more time to breathe. Um, so I, I, I really, really love it. And, uh, you know, it, it's, there's some growing pains, you know, there's some growing pains with, um, you know, people sort of getting used to the, the streaming aspect of something, but, um, but that's, you know, that's things, that's where things are moving. And it's, you know, the writing's been on the wall for, you know, a few years now. And I'm really proud of Dance with the Stars for being sort of the first to take that leap and to take that um, step into the unknown as the first show of its kind to do something like this. Um, and no doubt there'll be many, many shows, many, many more shows to follow suit. Um, but it, so far it's been a huge success. It's been an absolute huge success. And, uh, and having the new host, you know, with Alfonso joining the season, it's been fantastic and it's a great cast. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. I, I'm honestly, we were all kind of nervous. You're ever like, Oh, what does this mean? Uh, but so far it's been an absolute, um, standout success. So we're, we're very, we're thrilled. We're thrilled. Now, going from being a pro on the show to being a judge, um, obviously, that's that's been a transition, right? And something else that I was thinking of before we stepped into this interview is, do you feel as if the show has stuck to its original method with getting legendary stars, like a reboot of their career through this show? Or do you feel as if um, it's sort of changed a bit? Because I feel like for the first few years, they really featured non-dancers as the stars that they chose to select um, as, as the stars that they chose to participate in the show but in recent sure. years that's kind of changed and you've had like you know gymnasts whereas if they may not be professional dancers but that training really does benefit them in the long run so how do you feel about that are you okay with it or do you feel as if it puts a lot of the others who are non-dancers or have like none of that as their background at a disadvantage I, I think it's a great mix. I think that if we just had um, absolute non dancers from, you know, from scratch, um, I think over the years, America, uh, you know, has been really been educated with dance. They, they understand, like, you know, 10 years ago, if I said like a pasta doble, people were like, <laughs> wait, what did you, 
what did you say? You know, and now now I see a guy, you know, he's like, hey, man, I like that that New Yorker section and that cha-cha. You know, it's like there's there's this understanding of the dance. And so I think that it's good to have, um, you know, some higher levels of dance. So people who want to see that can appreciate that. And, and wow, I love that choreography and love that. Or somebody who prefers to see somebody who's never danced before really start at ground zero and see the progression. And the truth is, it, it's, it might seem like a, like a disadvantage, but it, we've seen that it's not, you know, I mean, the good example last season, you know, Iman, um, you had Jojo Siwa, who was a dancer, um, but Iman, who's a basketball player who's never danced in his life, he won, he won the show. So I think that it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. When you have experience, people expect more from you. So therefore it's harder to surprise people or to mm-hmm. impress people. Um, versus if you're a beginner, pe- people will actually will be rooting for you a lot more. So it, it kind of balances itself out sometimes, you know, in, in people's opinions or, or the way they feel about somebody on the show. So I think it's a good balance to have a mixture of people with experience, people without experience, people in between, you know, it's, it's good to have a, a bit of both. And you spoke a bit about how dance has been really an educational tool for its viewers. And I definitely agree. I think that it's been at the forefront of entertainment um, in recent years with shows like Dancing with the Stars or, you know, World of Dance, which you were on. Mm -hmm. or So you think you can dance. How are you hoping to see this level of education and love and appreciation for the art form expand with other projects that you may be involved in? Yes. Well, I mean, for me, dance is I believe is in all of us. It really is. You know, I think that when we, before we could walk or crawl, you know, you put music on and babies bob around, right? It's like, it's in us. It's in our bodies. It's in our DNA. And I think somewhere along the line, we forget, how, you know, about dancing or just forget the word dance, moving, you know, freedom of movement. And um, I just love being a part of a show like that, that gives up an opportunity for, you know, for people to rediscover or to reclaim um, this, this part of themselves, this awareness of their body and how to move it. And I think it's extraordinary. And I think it's, we see a show couldn't be around for 31 seasons unless there was tapping into something into the audience at home. And, and I think that that's what the show does. It taps into their, this, this inner dancer or this inner, I wonder if I could do that, or maybe I should try that. Maybe I should stay fat, step out my comfort zone. Um, there's so many different things that inspire you. Uh, within the show and to see that appreciation especially for dance too because you know where I grew up it wasn't it wasn't really a popular thing especially for boys yeah and yeah, that's and what I, you know, I love too is that men are really realizing yeah. they can get involved in this too there was like this weird stigma around dance and it was kind of bizarre actually if you think about it especially since if you go back to the beginning of time that's how we that's how we celebrated. That's how we mourned. That's how we did rituals. That's how we did, came together as communities. It's with food and dance. You know, literally, those are like the two things of how we came together as people. And dance somehow along the line got sort of like, um, it, it kind of like, it became a niche thing. And so um, it's cool. It's really cool to see Super Bowl champions and, you know, these amazing athletes and gymnasts and or, or Grammy Award winners or Oscar winners or just people from all different walks of life, you know, um, and uh you know love and appreciate dance it's really extraordinary and you know we were talking about the you know teachers and you know about this the southwest rapid rewards credit cards from chase this this contest with uh teach the love contest and the teachers in my life especially one of my dance teachers was um changed like changed my life Mm -hmm. literally changed my life and uh yeah that's what that's what i love about this this whole contest is like the teachers the giving back and the appreciation and of course travel, which is something I, I'm very passionate about. So it's a it's kind of a perfect thing. And I know it's early on in the competition, but before I let you go, who are yeah. your standouts in season 31 so far? Who do who do you think can take it all the way? You know, I think there's a few people. There's a there's no, it's not really obvious. I think that you look at people and go, oh, well, they're they might be one of the better dancers. But there's a lot of people who I'm like, there's a lot of potential there that I think they might do something. They might have that moment that just changes everything. I think Jordan Sparks is is just magnetic. You know, mm-hmm. she has a great presence. Um, you know, Wayne Brady is is just 
an iconic performer. Um, I think Charlie D'Amelio, I think she's, she's a great dancer. And I think that she's, she's, she, there's a shyness about her that I think it's going to be great to see her sort of open up with that through dance. If that makes sense. Um, I met Trevor Donovan actually involved. I was, he surprised me last week. He was really fantastic. I think he did a great job. Um, yeah, there's, there's a, there's, there's a handful of people that I honestly think I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Oh, Gabby, you know, from the bachelor, she's fantastic. Uh, so I, yeah, who knows? We'll see. We'll see what happens. I think that after this week, we're going to start to see, you know, people start to break down or start to excel. You know, you, you, now you start to see that, like, you know, the first two weeks are kind of like, okay, let's just, let's just get a, a lay of the land. And now we're going to start to see, you know, things start to unravel. Well, it was such an honor to speak to you today. I'm a, I have a dance background, so I was so excited to get this interview. So thank you oh, amazing. for all of the work that you do and for, you thank know, you. being such a champion of the art. And it was such a pleasure to speak to you today.